I completely agree. I think um, more and more we'll be seeing trials that are made where decisions are made based on depth of response rather than sort of one size fits all fixed duration. But we've kind of skirted around the issue with this patient, so have to make a decision. So how do we decide um, whether this patient gets venetoclax, obinutuzumab, fixed duration, or they go on a continuous therapy with a BTK inhibitor? That's kind of becoming one of the most common discussions nowadays when I see my patients. How, so how would you make your decision? When oh, you, you turn the patients? tables back on the moderator. <laughs> well, I think it's, um, so I think the temptation to make head-to-head comparisons between venetoclax and ibrutinib for a 17P deleted patient is tempting, but it's also probably fraught with potential wrong information or inf misinformation. Um, we don't have a head-to-head -head comparison in the frontline setting. We have very limited information about DEL17P treated patients in the frontline setting. We mentioned 31 patients treated at a single center. There's a small number of patients treated on CLL14 with the deletion 17P, which seemed to have a worse outcome um, than the rest of the patients who received venetoclax. So I think for me, I, I view it as they are similar therapies for patients. Um, I have heard talk about the fact that when you have a high-risk clone, you need to continuously suppress it um, and not stop therapy versus, you know, a fixed duration. I think all of that is speculative and research at this time um, and certainly unanswered. So I personally take into account patients' age to a certain extent, their comorbidities, their lifestyle, because each of these treatments have advantages and disadvantages that really need to be considered in the context of an individual patient. So for me, I discuss it with a patient and, and have them actively participate in the decision of what to do. I don't think biologically we have any firm data to support whether we need a BTK inhibitor or a BCL2 inhibitor or both in a patient with a deletion 17P. Samir, you have any input on when you're discussing with the patient this kind of two class no, of treatments? No, I think treatments. those discussions have gotten longer <laughs> with all these right. data, which is very good for our patients because it means that we have a lot of choices to discuss with our patients. And I agree, I think it is a very individualized decision and we should refrain from making head-to-head -head comparisons between cross trials because it's challenging. I Especially think one, with small numbers. Mm -hmm. With very small numbers of patients. I think one thing that's very reassuring with the venetoclax-based therapies at least is that in the past we have seen patients having responded to reintroduction of venetoclax if they have progression of disease. Now, whether that holds true for a patient that has deletion 17P, I don't think we really know the answer to that question. Um, but I, I would actually put in a plug for all our patients to hopefully be able to participate in a clinical trial um, outside of clinical sort of routine practice because then that way we can answer many of these questions that we don't really have good answers to. So there are national ECOG and Alliance run trials that are enrolling patients right now, albeit the ECOG trial is not enrolling patients that have deletion 17P for frontline setting. But I'm sure there are other trials that, that have patients that have deletion 17P in them uh, as an inclusion criteria. So I would encourage uh, patients and, and their physicians to consider enrolling patients into clinical trials. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think both of you were emphasizing on the efficacy and that we don't really know. Uh, I think it looks like the efficacy, at least right now, looks pretty comparable. Um, but when, if you put deletion 17P aside, if you're just talking with a frontline patient who needs treatment between BTK inhibitor versus venetoclax, for me, I think <clears throat> the breaking point is more along the line of toxicity, uh, consideration of toxicity and patient lifestyle and patient preference. So, for example, if a patient has a significant cardiac history, I'll be very hesitant to use a, a button of the first-generation BTK inhibitor. <clears throat> so, in that case, I might be leaning more towards the uh, maybe a venetoclax treatment. Or if a patient has a significant renal insufficiency and concern about their ability to handle tumor lysis syndrome, I might uh, lean away from the venetoclax-based therapy. But for most patients, it's actually they might be eligible for both. So in that case, I think a lot of the patient preference will come in. <clears throat> For example, some patients will say, I like the easy easing. Uh, so basically, I like not to interrupt my work schedule. I don't want to be in clinic for a whole day or uh, weekly. Uh, so those patients might prefer to use a, a BTK inhibitor versus patient who is willing to invest uh, upfront time, but then 
they might uh, be able to stop treatment after 12 months. So in those patients who might, they might be benefiting more from the venetoclax based therapy. So I think it's really, a lot of times patient preference would play into the decision making as well.